Okay. Okay, we're recording. Okay, Hi. so how you been? All right. It's been a long time. It's been a month now since we talked, so had a lot of learning experiences in between there. Yeah, yep. Has it been good to have a break for you to really see where you're at with your own process? Yeah, yeah, and it's been a little bit challenging too. So what are the ch what have what have the challenges been? Um, just trying to I don't even know how to say it. I'm like, uh, well, being pregnant, I can't tell. I know when I'm hungry, but I'm not. I'm not like stopping before I'm okay. Okay, so you know when you're hungry, but you're eating until you're uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm having trouble there. And then I noticed um, that the stuff that I'm craving is more of stuff I would call, like, junk food. Okay, so... Pizza, burritos, and, and, and then I realized today that I'm, I'm, again, demonizing that stuff because okay. I'm pregnant. That was the next, that was my next um, talk was like, well, of course you're going to crave the foods that you've demonized and you yeah and you just said demon you're kind of connecting the two which is good because you're not really craving that food you're craving what you feel like deprived of this yeah. all sounds to me like you're still in that victim position yeah oh my gosh yeah just i that's the sense i'm getting i mean you've been in this position um yeah. i really think that this is your lesson here like, how much longer can you live feeling sorry for yourself? Oh, God. I, I, I'm getting a very strong sense of that. Every time yeah. we talk, that is the sense I get. You just feel very, very sorry for yourself. You are victimized yeah. by your life. Yeah, I guess so. I, um, I could be I, wrong. I could no, be wrong, so. It's, it's true, because, yeah, I, you know. I can see it in all day, the way I'm thinking, you know. Yeah, and it's whether you're yeah, pregnant or not. It doesn't matter if you're pregnant or not. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's, it has nothing to do with hormones. This has everything to do with what you expected your life to be and how <laughs> pissed off and inferior you think your life is existing as it exists. You, this, yeah. You're pissed off that this is what you're living. So it sounds That's right. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how do you think if you truly believe in your heart that you've been given a piece of shit life and you're in it, how are you going to feel better about it? What would, what would, I, what would someone else do to feel better about it? Like really feel better about it or yeah. for the moment? <laughs> it, well, that's all it is, is in the moment because yeah. that's all that exists. So what are you doing to feel better about it? I can tell you what a lot of people do to feel better about it is they do drugs. They go yeah, shopping. Yeah. They're constantly trying to find a way to be compensated for having to live in a shitty ass life. Yeah. For, and it's yeah. a first world compensation, right? Because you don't really, it's all a matter of perspective. Yeah. So your are so someone else would look at your life and go, wow, what a luxury. Look at her house. Look at her car. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. She has the nice washer and dryer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, look at her. She must be, you know, doing so great and be so happy because of all the stuff she's got thinking that it's all about stuff. Right. Right. Either way, you're, you're in a state of mind and you, and, and this is a state of mind that a lot of people are in and it don't, don't identify it. I'm not saying this is you, this isn't you. This is a state of mind that I'm seeing. Yeah. You're holding on to a state of mind and yeah. it's a pretty wow. wretched, miserable state of mind. Yeah. You know, and how do you come to this feeling of being gypped? God gypped you. Your yeah. life sucks. Everything you have doesn't really work out or it's not as nice. It's not as good. It's not this or that. And I'm just, oh I could be wrong, but this is, no. the you know, I've worked with you enough that I'm like, okay, this is every single time, every single no. time. It's the same oh exact God. thing. How do you, so first thing you need to do is be aware of it, right? Yeah. Be aware. I look at life as if it sucks. 
life sucks. You need to become a, like, make those hats instead of life is good. You need to put life sucks. Yeah. That's, again, that isn't you. That's a way of looking at things. That's a, yeah. that's a perspective. How do people come to that perspective? Comparison. I yes. Guess. That's, it, it's, it requires comparison. You can't just think life sucks. It doesn't, you don't, don't have thoughts that way without having a comparison yeah. to what you think it should be. And then the difference between the two is what creates suck. And it's a negative difference, right? And yeah. so and we've talked about this. You've done this probably with your body. You've done this with your husband. You've done this with your whatever. I mean, every circumstance of your mind, you had a fantasy at some point or an idea of what you think it should be. You're not questioning that. And then reality is manifesting. Life is occurring to you. This is how life is, right? Life is occurring and your immediate reaction is that it's not good enough. Yeah. And then and it's like stages throughout this process with you too. It's like, I don't, you know, I don't feel that way so much with my body anymore and, or, or with my husband, but now it's like the kind of mother I am or the house that I have, you know? So it's just like, it's still there. It's still there. Yeah, and, it's like and, and, off and I would say, if you're eating until you're uncomfortable and you're eating food that you think is bad, you do have body image problems. So oh, it might God, be yeah. changing, it might be changing. So you're noticing there's a, a, a relative change in a positive direction. That doesn't mean it's in a positive environment. You're still probably yeah. still in a negative space. It's just not as negative, which is an improvement. <laughs> I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it. But the, it, the indication that you still feel deprived or that your body is flawed is a tell it is very clear to me when you feel like you have to eat healthy while you're pregnant. Wow. Do you know how many yeah. pregnancies uh -oh. have survived in famine eating dirt, yeah. eating dirt. I have a really yeah. good friend who craved chalk all through her pregnancy and she ate chalk. Yeah. So I'm just going to say the concept of eating healthy comes from that idea that you're there's some again the fantasy of what you're supposed to do as a pregnant woman wow yep and so you're left to always yeah. feel like the uh, like life sucks i suck pregnancy sucks my family sucks the laundry <laughs> sucks sucky mcsucky pants of all suckness your next animal you should call it just sucky piece of shit Oh my God, what a baby. <laughs> You're just not questioning your fantasies as really what's flawed. Yeah. When do you look at the fantasy and say, that's so fucked up? Yeah. Life yeah. has never been a fantasy. Ever. You could look at the media and go, oh, <laughs> what a fantasy. It's all fantasy. Yeah. It's all weird isolation from reality. You know? Yeah. So your reality is actually what life is. This is it. You know, again, if you were to be handed another life, so God says, fine, you don't want this one. Well, we'll maybe you need to figure this out. We'll give you another one and see how you do with the next one. Oh my gosh. So what's going to happen in your next life with this way of doing it? The same thing. You're going to hate the body you're in. Just not the right thing. Yeah. Not tall enough. Your last body was taller. Well, not good enough. <laughs> it's pr you can take this viewpoint and position it anywhere. What would happen if you won the lottery with this viewpoint? Let's just say you are now like $500 million winner. What's going to happen with this viewpoint? What will you do with it? Just waste it. Because you're going to want to have more because you'll see others with more than you and you're going to create an, a, and you're going to think that's, what's going to make you feel better. But what do you end up with? Nothing. You feel lacking. Yeah. It's lacking. It's yeah. not even nothing. Nothing is zero. It's, it's called negativity. It's not oh, good yeah. enough. It's lacking. Zero would be awesome. Nothing is awesome. 
you don't even have that, you have negative. It's always bad. It's always lacking. It's always not good enough. It's always sucky, right? Yeah. So how are you, how, uh, you could say a way you've always compensated is to try to make it better. So the good, the good news is you're at least energized to make it better. But you maybe it's a, gl a glamorized idea of what life is. So you, we could say the benefit of you glamorizing life is that it takes energy to do that. At least you think it's reachable, right? Yeah. So there's there's a positiveness in that that you're not apathetic. Whereas it's too hard. I shouldn't do anything, right? At least you effort, right? So there's benefit, but what? Where does that effort really go if the fantasy isn't even realistic or a reality that's achievable? Yeah, nowhere. I just, I never complete it or never feel yeah, because like it's, it's good enough. Yeah. yeah, you got it. And well, that's understandable. Can you see why that's understandable? Yeah. That's, under those circumstances, anybody would feel that way. Why would you complete something that is not really working tor towards that end goal? Even if it's beneficial in what you're doing, it doesn't really, it's not good enough to reach the end goal. So that's why a lot of people quit, even though there's benefit. They don't see the benefit because they're only looking at some fantasy, you know. Wow, well, yeah. I, I, this happens a lot when uh, people are dieting, trying to lose weight. What they do is they um, they may they wanted to lose 40 pounds. They've only lost 20 pounds, so they say screw it, and they'd rather gain 20 pounds back than to adjust and say, "Wow, I'm good enough with 20 pounds." They feel that 20 is not good enough, so they might as well have lost uh, yeah. zero. Yeah. Same approach. So again, notice it's the same approach. Same, same. Yep. Oh. I feel so mad. <laughs> well, what's anger going to do? I know, nothing. Just. Well, let's just go into that anger and tell me what it's trying to serve. There's a purpose for the anger. What's it serving? <laughs> What does the anger thinks it's going to do? I don't know. I guess force me to do something and change this thinking, but thought. Well, would you agree the anger says you should know better? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah, a fantasy. That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> leading there's up to this session today, I was just, you know, cussing myself out in my head like I can't believe you're still in this epic spot you know you're just not, it's okay what is why is there a problem with that you clearly aren't I connecting know. you aren't seeing it clearly yet if you saw it clearly emotionally it would change but you're not seeing it clearly emotionally you've got to look at what you get out of these fantasies emotionally you are hearing it intellectually that's a totally different con. That's a totally different way to conceptualize it. You're conceptualizing it intellectually. That's why you're connecting with what I'm saying. You're like, yeah, yes, yes. But what is that doing to get you to let go of the fantasies? Yeah. Nothing. You got to let go of the fantasies so we can we can make you aware these fantasies are why you're miserable. You're not a miserable person. Those fantasies, however, that you're holding yourself to really put you in, uh, promote the conditions that you live with. Yeah. yeah. You're really holding yourself to some superior standard of living. You know, what do you lose if you can't meet those standards? What ha What's wrong? Let's look at what happens if you cannot and will never meet those standards of superior living. What does that mean? What is the symbolism if you don't and cannot reach that superior standard of living. However, it's defined, whether it's thinness, healthiness, perfectness, cleanliness, you know, order, control, whatever those things are. 
you cannot achieve or it is not reachable. What does that mean? It just, I don't know, makes me feel like I'm worthless. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, like, who in your life? Who are you trying to prove yourself worthy for? Oh, my God. Well, um, one is my mom, of course, and then um, my husband family is he has all sisters and they're all strong you know like single mother hard working you know their kids are all successful and I feel like I can't live up to that and what if you can't God. what if you can't yeah. I know I've been, I've been telling myself that this last week too like I can't live up to that so how do I you know, how do I cope? I mean, how do I just let go and not care? Well, you clearly are judging yourself. So you have to really look at, is it worthy of, is it really something that is, first of all, is what they're doing worthy of praise? Is it really worthy of pride and superiority? Should we be worshiping these people? Yeah, I thought so. But then when I, you know, the reality of it is, no, you know, I thought so, again, it's like, I don't know, I've seen and know people who don't, you know, they just don't take care of their shit, and then these people are, like, successful, and... Six. So is that so, so that's their life, under their circumstances, under what they're doing, under all the complexity, right? Is yeah. your situ are you the same as them and living in the same exact vacuum as them and should be held to the same exact performance as them? No. Okay, so it's so unique, right? Yeah, yeah. So are they really worthy of praise and worship? Should we be worshiping these people? No. They're no different than you. The pr so do you see where you're holding yourself to some weird fantasy that doesn't even exist and yet you're living in your life thinking it sucks because of that you're you've really um taken these people and blown them into such superiority yeah yep everybody outside me <laughs> their life must be so much better oh my god yeah Well, I want to ask you, um, what does that have to do with your life? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, once again, I'm, I'm worried about my husband seeing them. And then, you know. So you're projecting him feeling the way you do when you look at them? Yeah. So you feel like a piece of shit. And you think your husband's going to think the same way. So, can you explain to me why you're such a piece of shit? <laughs> All things I think. Like, you know, I'm, I don't have higher education. Okay, these are I all... Have a job now. These are all things, right? Remember, you're like holding yourself. Here's the equation. You're holding yourself to some weird fantasies. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, God. You have a belief system in your head... That is, you don't think it's questionable. You're not questioning it. It's like black and white. I have to have an education. Do you? Of course, that's something that's great to have. It's beneficial. But do you really have to have one to be a good person? No. Okay, so the, what you're confusing right now is your worth as a human being. You're confusing your worth as a human being and social structure. Yeah. Social structure is great and all. 
but it's a different, completely different situation than who you are as a human being and the worth you have. Do you really need to have an education to be a worthy and worthful human being? To no. be valuable? Really soak that in. Do I have to be super educated to be a good value, a person that's good? No. You know, my mom never got educated outside of high school. She was, in, well, I take that back. She did go back and get a, she did that later in life. Master gardener. It's not, it's not a four year degree. One of my best friends has got a associate. Do I give a shit? My, when I find people I care about, do I have need their resume of where they went to school, what their grades <laughs> like were, yeah. how much money do you make, what type of car do you drive? Let's take all the pretend things of happiness, and I want your resume. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you're confusing all of this social dogma. You think that's what defines your worth as a human. Does it really question that? Question it. You're not questioning that shit. You've been brainwashed and you're not questioning the brainwash. You've attached your worth as a human being to those things. I'm not telling you not to go get an education or not to encourage kids to get it. That's the system we live in. Right. But should we be telling them if you don't do what you're told, you're a piece of shit. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh my God. Yep. Really look at that. Because you're not, this is, this is where you're not working. You understand what we're talking about. But you're not questioning those belief patterns. You're holding on to them. For dear life. You know, you might think, well, if I... And just who I am, then I'm worthless. Well, question that. I know you believe that and you feel that. The feeling comes from the actual belief in that. You wouldn't yeah. feel worthless if you didn't have to hold on to such dumb beliefs. Yeah. And then I think, too, I feel afraid that, you know, the, the people around me who think that way, are going to reject me, but yeah, I mean, I, this, this is making it any different. I know, right? Let them reject you. Who gives a shit? You've got to be okay. Well, that's the thing. You have to go into that fear of rejection, that that is the truth. If someone doesn't know how to honor themselves or love themselves, they are going to grade you based on those extrinsic social matters. Yeah. Whether you're, that's the truth. I knew that I became very clear of that when I um, recovered and I saw that my mother and I, I, I witnessed this in an out of body experience that my mother was filtering her love to me through religion. And so yeah. if I wasn't that religion, I was now a threat to her survival, even though I was her daughter. She didn't wow, know yeah. who she was outside of that religion. She didn't have a sense of her own worth without that religion. And so how would she, how would she be open to my worth without that religion? She doesn't even know her own worth without it. So I was very clearly aware that if I break free from this, she, she very well could reject me. But I know in my heart, I well, became aware that she would rather me leave that space that she's comfortable with a tiny, tiny, tiny little brain controlled space if it meant that I would live. Yeah. yeah. So I honored that even though I knew she was unaware. Plus I knew if I had committed suicide, that would be the lesser of the pains. <laughs> yeah. So I did her yeah. a favor without her knowing anyways, but that was very specific for me to be aware of that, that I no one else is aware of what's right for you. And so when other people are, what's the word, very pushy about what's right for them, that's because they love you. 
Yeah, yeah. Because they think that's what's right. And that's that, what's it's, yeah, it. Yeah, because it feels right to them. Yeah. And they would, and they love you. So they want what's right for them. They clearly think is the right thing for everybody. Not realizing that that's their selfish, that's their survival mode coming through. So you, you have to really honor who you are without all that bullshit. We kind of need to strip away all the bullshit to really get to the essence of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm just, oh my gosh. When I, when I get into this space, I feel like such an asshole. I'm like, well, like you are, I'm not going to argue with that. You are an asshole when it comes to that. Yeah. So was I, and so was everybody else. And again, look at how you're treating people. Don't you yeah. agree? That's kind of me trying to enforce my own insecurity on everybody. That's what happens. You're doing to others what you don't want done to you. Yeah. yeah. So go into yourself. Are you really a loser? I mean, go into this thought um, just with body image. You have a body that is worthy of judging, mockery, rejection. If you're in a body that's like that, does that mean that you are a bad soul? you're a bad person? No. Think of all the people out there who are disabled and the amount of like, um, they get ignored. They don't get even looked at. Just think of all of the, um, what's the word? Yeah, I've looked at that before. Too. Does that mean that they are not worth anything? No. Okay, so I know you say that. I need you to feel it. Again, there's a you're struggling with this in you're you're struggling with the what you're hearing and getting it and actually feeling it from the inside. So it's important that you start really asking these internally, that you get it externally in your mind, but you need to go into the internalization of it. Otherwise this isn't gonna work. Yeah. I really want you to imagine you will never ever meet their standards. And do you, and should you, if it causes this much negativity, no. this much shame inside of yourself, should you have to reach their standards of superiority? If it brings about this much problems in your life, Again, you can say it all you want. You have to actually go into the question and really feel it out. Should you have to? If this is what has happened by you trying to be the super achiever of all, please like me to my family and your family, right? <laughs> please like me. Please like me. Yeah. See me as an equal. See me as an equal. Okay, so how has that really worked for you? It hasn't. And just make everything worse. Yeah. So is it really something you should be glamorizing in their life? Like, are those things really worthy of being glamorized? That's a, don't you think that's a good question to contemplate? Yeah. Have you glamorized those achievements in these people? Have I? Sorry, yeah. Have you glamorized? Yes. Yeah. Are these achievements really worthy of being glamorized if whoever is achieving them is as miserable as you? And maybe for some people it doesn't cause this misery for whatever reason, whether it's they did it when they were teenagers, right? <laughs> like going to college. They did it when they were 18. They had no kids. 
you know, for whatever reason, they had their shit together or they were emotionally more mature. Who knows what the circumstances were? It was promoted for them so that it wasn't hard, you know? Should a person be held to a certain standard that requires emotional problems for them to achieve for whatever reason? Let me give you an example of this. In 2016, my mother, who had been diagnosed with brain cancer five years earlier, four years earlier, actually um, began to die. Okay. I, in my mind, had this idea that I'm, I'm ready to write this book. I'm going to write this book. Okay. It is now 2018 and I haven't written it or I've written it. It's just nowhere close to publishing. Right. <laughs> Should I have felt bad about myself for committing to write this book long time ago and moved? I moved five times in five years. Okay, so since publishing Weight Loss Apocalypse, I have moved five times. It was published seven years ago. Okay, so I moved five times in five years across the country, mind you, three of those times. Yeah, three, three times. Then my mother began to die and I was, I lived with her for a couple of months and then I had the recovery process from all of that. That's life. That's yeah. life. It's a beautiful thing. My life's book had a lot of just stuff going on. Should I, you know, imagine if I were to say, I have to go get educated during that time. Just imagine if I believed all that shit that you're carrying. Can you imagine if I held myself to your standards over the course of the last seven years? Oh, God. Yeah. Just a thought. Should I feel bad about myself? And all during that time, we financially struggled. I have siblings yeah. that are super loaded. Should I feel bad because they're loaded and I'm not? Yeah, that's true. What does their material success have to do with my life? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the difference is I'm not using it, those things to define my value as a human being at all. On top of that, I've had significant back problems over the course of three years. Should I feel that my life is inferior to theirs because they have more money and they don't have back problems? Do you see how when you use these superficial things to de define your worth as a human, that I would feel like my life sucks. That their life, why is their life so easy and mine's such a piece of shit? <laughs> yeah. You get, you see where things have gotten clouded for you? It's like, yeah. you think that your life is supposed to be some angelic, perfectly white vacuum of nothingness. <laughs> yeah. But your life is full of movement and color and ebbs and flows and ups and downs and think of how cool your life has been up to this point. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Even the story of how you got together with your husband is freaking badass. It's a pretty fucking awesome story. Yeah. So with that said, what you've done and probably why you, have had issues since for a long time is you've believed some fantasy ideal of what your life should be. And relative to that, you have felt like shit about your life since you were a child. Yeah. Ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. And how has that worked for you? Oh my gosh. <sighs> been a nightmare. Yeah. Well, is it your life that's been a nightmare or your your view of what life's about has been a nightmare. My view of it. Yeah. yeah. So what would you tell yourself if you could go back to that girl before she started feeling sorry for herself? What would you tell her? Stop comparing everything. Okay. But how is she, life. how is she going to not compare 
Her life is clearly suckier than that girl's. Look at her. How come she has that? I don't. Right? Yeah. How do you get someone to stop comparing? Um, gratitude, I guess. Maybe well, be grateful you... for what I have. Okay. That, you're, all this is all right, but it's like, let's put them in order. How do you get to gratitude for what you have? What has to happen? Maybe this is what's missing because I don't know. You have to accept whatever it is as what it is. You have to accept it. Yeah. You have to really go into this is what it is and you have to accept it. You have to be like, okay, here's what it is. I'm going to accept what it is as it is. I'm not going to try and change it. Yeah. Unless yeah. I'm the direct cause of what I don't like, I can, and I'm just, I, it is what it is, and I don't really have power to change it. Like if you get in a car wreck and lose your legs and you become a paraplegic, do you, can you change that? No, no. No. Can you change the fact that, you know, I have a client who was molested at age six. Can she go back and change that? No. Can you ch go back and change, you know, the fact that your parents probably had mental health issues? Can you change that? Can you change what they did for a living, which is why they were poor? No. Can you change any of that? No. Can I go back and change the fact that my ch my parents were holding on so tightly to our religion? And that that's what they wanted to do to raise us? Can I change that? That that's what they wanted to do and that's how they thought it was the right thing to do? To raise their 10 kids? Can I go back and change that? No. No. No, the serenity prayer makes more sense. <laughs> you just accept it and you stop yeah. judging it. You have to go into... Is there something wrong with the fact that my parents did the best they could with what they knew and that's what they thought was the right thing to do? No. Do I need to forgive them for doing that? No. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't know. No, doing. no, no. They didn't yeah. do anything wrong. Okay. I don't need to forgive them. That puts me above them. Oh, wow. They did exactly how they should with the way they thought. They did exactly what any parent would do under the circumstances of what they were living through and at the time and the era and what their families were promoting and what they felt they needed to do to be fitting in with their families. They did exactly what they should do. Do I really need to forgive them? You hear that word and how it doesn't really quite work anymore? No. No. I just need to accept that's what it was and adapt. So you accept it. And if I could go back in my mind, I would accept it. I just wouldn't take it so serious. I would do this. Yeah. I would go to church. I would dress the way they needed me to dress. I would use the same language. But when it came to me having freedom from it, I would leave. And I would hold on to my sense of reality. I would never let that go. Yeah. And then I wouldn't have any of the, I wouldn't have any of those issues. I wouldn't have had any of the, you know, shame either coming out of it. You know, anyways, that's my story. So going back, like, honestly, you're, you're saying the right thing. I wouldn't compare myself. Well, that comes after you accept your reality as whatever it is. And then the next thing is, well, then I would, what did you say? Um, Gratitude. Yeah, well, you can't have gratitude for what you have if you think that there's something wrong with it. So you yeah. have you have to accept it for what it is, as it is, and you come to that because you know you can handle it and it's good enough for you. Whatever it is, it's you can adapt to it, at least for now. Yeah. Because yeah. it's temporary. Yeah. And then... When I do accept it, it kind of frees me up to change the things that I can because otherwise I'm just stuck here mm -hmm. trying to medicate myself from <laughs> thinking that I, you know, I don't fit what 
my ideal is. Yeah, and you oh have to change God. everything yeah. to fit whatever that is. You know, the reality is, too, the people that you see have different and other opportunities. It's all, rel yeah. it's all relative to how you perceive it anyways. They may have all the luxuries and still be miserable. Yeah, yeah. That, I see, I've seen that, too, recently. Like, when I've, you know, kind of opened my eyes a bit more when I've been around a certain group that I thought was just like, you know, the king and queen of the world. But yeah. the reality of it, like how their kids are jerks and, you know, everybody's on medication and, you so, know Yeah, these I mean? are things you didn't know as a kid, but you always thought that uh -huh. they're rich, so they must be happy, and I'm not, so I'm miserable. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you don't really understand the consequences or circumstances of the mind. And so yeah. even if they have luxuries, they're not necessarily even recognizing they exist, appreciate them, or they're using them as a coping mechanism. So yeah. wh why does it matter how much in other people's lives you're living the one you're, you're, this is how yours is unfolding. You didn't plan it. Right. You didn't. Here it is. So why try to be the creator of it when you're not? You're the witness of it. You're witnessing it, and you're pissed. <laughs> yeah. As if God sucks. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, maybe really, because I'm running around and every other road in my mind is like, this and mm -hmm. what in the heck? Yeah. You might want to stop so trying bad. to be God or better than God. I mean, you really yeah. think you are. You might want to stop. Because you're going to suffer for a long time. I mean, this is the downside of you thinking you're better than God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Honestly, do you think the best God can do is just having money? That's what he gives everybody who's happy. Money. Wow. Yeah. A nice house. That's what you get when you read the scriptures. Beautiful big house. Yeah. And you get really thin. You get thinner bodies when God loves you more. Oh my gosh. It's just so bad. And you believe that shit. Yeah, I do too. I know then, you, you do. Know, when I go to church and I'm like seeing all the, you know, the front row people are all perfect and beautiful. You might want to change churches. What is that? You might want to change churches. I know. I know. Oh but God. it could be just you. So. Yeah, that's what I, I think it is. You know, <laughs> just saying. because they're not like punks, you know, but it's just what I'm seeing and projecting my crap on them. And you could because you're God. You think you yeah. know more than he does. Just a thought, you know, you might want to really consider that your concept of what's good and what's bad might be distorted and why you're miserable. Yeah. So really, really think, is everybody in the world that doesn't have what you imagine to be the best, are they all as miserable or more miserable than you? No. So no. really look at the dogma that you've internalized. Why is it that other people are free from the bondage of those expectations? And are allowed to love their lives as they are. Why aren't you free to just accept life as it's happening for yourself? Yeah. Why? There's an answer. Because I'm always looking at something else like better. <laughs> it's because you think you're supposed to have something better. Well, yeah. when are you going to stop chasing that? Today? Right well, now? I don't, you have to look at it. You have to really look into this. Is it really better? If you cannot adapt to this life, are you going to be capable of adapting to any life? No. Doesn't it sound like an inside job? my brain to like a million dollar bank account I'm in trouble you got it like, nothing's gonna change yeah. 
you will be the same way. And, and it's still, it's the same thing. That's why it's like giving a small body. What you going to do? The, I'm going to make it really fucking huge because I'm going to start to control my, my food. Yeah. And I'm going to end up with binge eating issues. And I'm going to do this whole thing again. And I'm going to feel a lot bitter because my body's fat and it used to be thin. I mean, you can just see it. It's, that's what you're doing with everything. It's a state. It's an, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of being. When do you stay pot? When do you stop everything and you say nothing is allowed to change? Nothing. I have to change. Not changing my clothes. I'm not changing my house. I'm not changing my husband. I'm not changing anything. I'm not going to change my goddamn food. I'm not going to change my weight. I'm not going to change anything. I am changing. From the inside. I'm going to adapt. Yeah. I'm going to accept yeah. life as it is. It's good enough. If I can't accept reality, I'm basically telling God to fuck off. Do you believe in God? Yeah. Just saying. You've been rejecting reality since you were a kid. When do you accept reality so you can be free? Yeah. I, I can't, I don't know how to get this inside your head, honey. Inside your heart. That's where it's not going. What if nothing were to change? Nothing. What would, what would happen? You mean like nothing, like nothing, nothing I can change. Yeah. Nope. This is it. This is it. This is your level standard of living. This is your reality. This is locked in. There's a benefit on one side. I know you, there's a benefit on one side. What's the benefit? This is it. So that anxiety, would it go away? Yeah. What's the first, what, what's the first thing that you wouldn't have to do or feel pressure to do? I'm eating for this baby, first of all. Well, yeah, I know, right? Just get over that. Yeah. You know what I had when I was pregnant? McDonald's. Yeah, It me sounded too, so good. Oh, my God, it sounded so good. Do you I think I really there. gave a shit? No. <laughs> because I didn't believe in the dogma. I, yeah. I, I mean, the dogma of the diet industry is a freaking joke. Yeah, it is. I know. I learned that when I recovered, so I never really gave a shit. And I had the most amazing pregnancies and these gorgeous babies. Yeah. You're worse off feeling bad about your food than the actual food you're eating. Again, that type of stress and anxiety is impacting the endocrinology of this baby. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just I saying. Yeah. So do you really feel bad about what you're eating right now? No. Okay. No. So, yeah. So, you got it. So those are those are things that you have immediate relief from. What else? What if you were never? You found out you'll never get an education. You'll never ever go to college. It's just not in this lifetime. That's not what you have to do this in this lifetime. It's not. I just figure out what I can do. It's not a requirement. Let me just say it this way: It's not required in this lifetime for yeah. you. So whether you get an education or not is really up to you, but it's not required. Yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> How does that feel? I wouldn't take the time to try, and I would just figure out what I can do. 
Okay, see what what do you think that tells me? What do you think that tells me? Tells me you don't really want to uh, do it. No. So I don't. Wh- then don't. Why isn't <laughs> there honor in that? Yeah. For me, I I freaking love school. Love it. I would do it whether I had to or not, only because I really enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Obviously, it's when I am, I'm, I'm learning something I appreciate and want to understand that I enjoy it. If I'm having to study something I could care less about, I hate it. It's boring, right? But anyway, so that's in, why isn't that honorable, that feeling that you just had? Why doesn't that get a voice? I don't really want to yeah. go. I don't want to go. I don't feel the need. I have other skills I have another way to make an impact and to provide for my family. I don't have to do that. Yeah. How does how does that feel? It feels relieving. And I still just feel kind of a tinge from all the uh, again, other people's ideas of what makes They can have those ideas. That's better. what yeah. that's what they that, that's what's right for them. They have a very yeah. strong feeling about that they should go to college, but should you be their bitch? No. And go no. to college for them? No. no. Right? So go back into that yeah. space and tell me if that tinge still exists. Yeah, whose life are you living? Whose life are you living? Theirs? Yeah. <laughs> Mine. I mean, I could see I have if, been living, trying to live theirs. All yeah, I'm, right? I could see if you were theirs and your role was to perform for their life because you're, they own your life, why you would feel obligated. Yeah. Are you... I mean, is it their life you're living? No. No. So whose voice should you honor? My own. Yeah. That, again, that doesn't dishonor what they think is right for their life. They should do what they feel is right for their life. No different than me saying to you, you should do what you feel is right for your life. Right. And if going to school doesn't really have any pull and there is no real sense of need and there is no concept of it really improving or helping or doing anything in your life, why would you waste the money, effort, thought, and carry shame over something that doesn't really work for your life? Because you're afraid of their opinion? Well, let them have their opinion. Right. They're going to yeah, have, have been so stuck in that for my whole life, just worried about what other people think that I can't even live. Yeah, and part of that is you think that they know what's right for you more than yeah. you, you know what's right for you. Is that even possible when you really think about it? Is that possible? No. No. Mm-mm. Even your, when you're parenting your children, you're doing what's right for you for them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah, I do. Because uh, I can see that when I'm in you know, a better space, I can do better with my son. But when I'm trying to parent him like I think I should in front of somebody, you know. It just doesn't. It's me that he's like retracting. And, you know, I can tell that it's not, it's not good. <laughs> Yeah, well, because you're punishing him so that you can get someone else's approval. So he's your slave yeah. bitch. That's disgusting. Don't. <laughs> it's understandable. Yeah, yeah. Because you're so you're more afraid of their opinion than you are how your son is taking this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. See that you could probably say that's how I was parented. Yeah. Exactly. So you're exactly. just passing it down to the next generation. Yep. I, I've seen that in the last week for sure. I I really noticed that shit and the, some of the things that I do that I hate when I do it. It's exactly like my parents. Yeah. Well, you're not. You like, okay, you never really. Yeah. You might want to forgive or give your parents grace. 
Yeah. Because you're going, oh, they had this yeah. problem. That's why they were that way. Oh. Yeah, now I can see it. Don't you wish your son angry. just didn't give you any credibility? He's like, oh, she's special. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My mom's Aww. lost her shit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Mom, I'll stop doing that. Look, look, my mom's a good person. Come on, you guys. Look, she's doing it right. Aww. So you got to be able to do this. Because you don't want to parent your kid that way. Yeah. And you're okay if it's... Because it works. Who's the one that knows your kid? Yep. Should they be telling you how to parent your kid? No. I know. So at some point you have to be a, you have to be independent here. You have to really get your autonomy and independence. You're not independent. You're co uh -uh. you're relying on everybody's opinion. And how's that working? How do you feel no. about yourself? No. And you end up feeling really weak and incapable of doing this on your own. Yeah. Like I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to keep going. You know, like, yeah, I've oh, been having bad thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Because mm -hmm. it is miserable. This yeah. is miserable. This is no way to, to live. Like, aren't you a lot? Are, you are here. You have a life here. This body is giving you life whether you want it or not. What do you want to do with it? Once again, start with school. That goes away because you can say that's really not something I find important right now in my life. I don't, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Let's get rid of that one from, from the dogma. We're basically saying, yeah, no, that's not necessarily true for everybody. And it is questionable because you have to really have number one, all the money. You have to have the life and ease to do it all the time. And you have to have the state of mind to be open to learning. Yeah, right. Maybe you'd rather learn something that you can apply today versus learning something I'll apply in five years. Yeah. Okay, so if that's removed, how's that feel? And you know what? When you were at, of the age, it wouldn't have worked out. You weren't ready. You weren't in uh -huh. it again. You were still in this state of mind. It just, there's no way you could have done it. So to even hold yourself to it as a kid is just wrong. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That wasn't in this life's lesson for you. The benefit is you don't have $50,000 of education debt you're still paying 20 years later. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's my husband. Yeah. You know, he doesn't even use his education all that much. Yeah, that's how I, you know, heard from a lot of different people, too, around me. Well, and there's a lot of benefit to it, like discernment, awareness of how to teach myself, how to do things. There's a ton. I recommend school for everybody. But it has, yeah. to, it has to make sense. It didn't make right. sense for you back then. Why should you have to be held to some idea that doesn't make sense in your current reality? It didn't make sense in your current reality when you were then, and it doesn't make sense in your current reality now. When do you stop saying, that's what I have to do? If it ever makes sense in your current reality, and it sounds like something fun you want to do, then it, then it should work. But you're just, I don't know what else to tell you other than you have to go in and release yourself from this shit. So that your yeah. life can exist out as it is. If this is how your life is going to be permanently, how would you grade this? It's 
it's a lot of relativity in it, right? So it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's like, well, relative yeah. to those people, I've got an A+. Plus. Well, relative to what, how bad it used to be, I still have an A+. Plus. I mean, you can relatively do it. Is it good yeah. enough? Is it really that bad? No. No. Yeah, if I'm being honest with myself, it's not. It's a good life. Yeah, is it worthy of shame? Like, should you be ashamed? No. So if someone else thinks that you're failing, <laughs> relative to what they're holding themselves to, is that something you should really, really honor? No. No. No, because that, that's it. Don't you agree? That's kind of ignorant. Yeah, yeah, when I'm, I'm looking at that. That's, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, to expect everybody to just be able to do it is really quite ignorant. Right. Think of all the awareness that you have that allows you to witness that ignorance. The people that don't have a clue, but yet you're expected to meet these standards of superiority. Yeah, and for what? Just for their brief little recognition and nothing. Right, and it's brief. Nothing. It, it, yeah, so you live in hell for yeah. their brief moments of, wow, good for you, and then they move on with their life. Yeah. <sighs> you really need to start getting rid of the stuff that's not authentic. That is something I need you to really do until we talk again. That's, yeah. your, that's your assignment. You need to go in and get rid of the shit that you're honoring that's bringing you misery. Yeah. For someone else to have a fleeting moment of good for you. I'm proud of you. You know, again, that was like me in the religious dogma. It was horrible for me. Horrible for a brief yeah. moment for my mom to think I'm safe when the reality of me in it is horrible. Yeah. Right, if she had known the horror that that was created, creating, would she have wanted me to stay there for her safety? No. Mm, no. I knew that when I had that out of body, and I went, oh, damn, I need to get out of this for her. Yeah. Because if she was aware, she would want me out. She just has no freaking clue that this exists. To her, it feels safe and righteous and promoted, and for me, it felt demonizing and dark and isolating and suffocating and I had no soul I had no reality there was no existence in it except for memorization right wow yep and I just had to honor too it's like if someone really loves me they would want me to do what is intrinsically right for me and I'm just gonna do that and if someone wants me to not do what's right for me, then they they can judge me all they want. I'm not going to change. Yeah. As long yeah, as I'm not harming than, someone else, I mean, what's why do they care if I'm not harming anybody? Yeah. Which I know I don't. I'm not a harmful person. I do not want to harm anybody. From my heart, from my soul, I am a safe person. So why does it matter all that dumb superficial shit? Why does it matter? That's your challenge. Yeah. Your challenge is to remove on your list of things that you have to do that are not questionable. All the dogma needs to be erased. Anything that brings you a sense of misery, guilt, failure, inadequacy, you are to remove it from your reality. It is not serving you. It's not serving this pregnancy. Yeah. Okay. Are you really that bad of a person? I want you to really go into that. Are you a bad person? No. No. Only when I'm trying to control all this. 
Yeah, to prove you're not, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you have to question why, if you're not inherently a bad person, why do you need to prove anything? Yeah. Why would you need to prove anything? What do you need to prove if you're already a good person? What is, what needs to be, why? why? The problem is you have to come, you need to come to that yourself and recognize that no one else can actually, no, there is not one other human being on this planet that you've ever come in contact with to include your own mother that has the awareness of, you, of what's within you and what's right for you. You're an adult. At some yeah. point you have to start honoring those things and maybe what the problem is, is you've said, well, what everybody else has is what's right for me. And what you're not seeing is that's not working. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. So what is realistic? What is, what is within your reality? Can you handle it? Currently, yeah. the current reality, can you handle it? Yeah. Can you handle it if someone says, well, you're making a terrible mistake? Yeah. Yeah. You go, well, if I am, I'm okay with that. I'm doing the best I can with what I'm aware of that is right for me and my family. And that's all, that's all I can do. Yep. Has this been helpful at all?